Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, The Rise of Kyoshi chapter analysis video. This one's going to be for chapter 6 of the book and this one's called Promises. So uh, this is a kind of quick chapter in that it's mainly about the sort of interaction between our teenage characters all around the same age. So this kind of group of uh, Kyoshi, Yun, and Rangi. Most of the scene is uh, Kyoshi and Yun talking, but then Rangi comes in right at the end. And it, it's just meant to be, I suppose, get across what the group, their, their group dynamic is as people who all are actually friends. They are actually a kind of trio to a degree. So that's what the chapter is about. Uh, there's a lot of details I think that actually come out from this one, even though it's not the most kind of detailed uh, chapter. First of all, we learn that uh, Kyoshi's role, her official role basically at the mansion, in addition to just being servant, is mainly to be sort of the direct like assistant to Yoon, more or less tidying up after him because uh, one of Yoon's sort of bad traits is that he's very messy. So. Um, Kyoshi effectively she jokes here that she's effectively Yoon's nanny and that she just has to pick up after him or in this case she has to help him sort through all of the different presents that he's being given by all these vendors who are coming to the mansion to pay respects to the new avatar. She has to help him decide what presents he has already, what he needs to keep and stuff like that. And we also learn here that the reason Kyoshi was given this role is because the staff at the mansion noticed that Kyoshi has this like compulsive need to tidy things away and keep things neat and organized. So that's a little thing with her character that we get. We also, in a reference to like the previous chapters, uh, get that um, when they're interacting, she notices that like Yoon is wearing a different pair of shoes than normal and she notices that they're bigger. And it's because Yoon has his feet all bandaged up in the bigger shoes and he's, he doesn't want to let Kyoshi know about this. So the idea about this is of course um, the, the previous drill that uh, Yoon was asked to, to perform by John Zhu was doing the firebending training on uh, basically spiky ground that uh, John Zhu made. So this clearly gets across the idea that Yoon had damaged his feet enough that he actually needed to wear bandages around them and he doesn't want to let Kyoshi know that this is happening because I think deep down you're seeing the idea that he's a bit embarrassed by the fact that you know John Zhu is asking him to do these more and more desperate things. He knows that it's taking it a little bit too far but he doesn't want his friends to kind of be aware that it's being taken too far so he kind of hides this from them. Um, but the, the main plot that happens here is that um, Yun asks Kyoshi if she will accompany him and the and everyone else basically to the meeting, uh, the, tr the kind of treaty, the new treaty negotiations with Tagaka and the Fifth Nation. This is happening out at the Eastern Sea near the South Pole. And this is obviously what's going to happen in the next chapter which is called the Iceberg. So that's where it's happening, really close to the South Pole, away from Earth of course. The next thing that we learn is basically that uh, Yun talks about how the reason you should come is that I, I know you hate outlaws, so this will be a chance to see us get a big victory over outlaws. Um, <clears throat> so that's a, that's, a, that's a nice little thing of like, we sort of have seen that idea of like, you know, she doesn't like outlaws. Yun knows that that's a thing about her. And the, the main reason, like she asks like, but really, why do you want me to come? Like, yeah, Rangi's coming, of course, like Heyran's going, Kelsang. Um, all these other characters, uh, John Zhu, of course, it makes sense why they're there, but Kyoshi is just a servant. She doesn't really have earthbending training. She knows how to earthbend, but is not a fighter at all, really, at this point in time. So why is he asking her to come? This is almost putting her at risk. And he explains that basically what he wants is he wants someone with a normal perspective. He wants someone who is not just there as like part of the avatar's entourage. He wants someone who basically just knows him primarily as him and doesn't so much just treat him as the avatar because I suppose we basically learn that Rangi, even though she's friends with Yoon, kind of does tend to put, oh, he's the avatar first above the person. And what Yoon wants here is basically someone who after negotiations will be able to basically say, you did well, Yoon, not as the avatar but just you yourself personally and I think you get the idea that Yoon really likes that perspective that Kyoshi has in his life in that she isn't someone who puts a massive sort of stock on the fact that he's the avatar and can still treat him as just being himself so that's the getting across just how close uh, Yoon and um, 
he or she actually are about this whole thing. Um, this is where we learn uh, some very interesting detail here and um, that I think a lot of people have been kind of wondering about. I think I've had, already had people asking me about it already. Um, uh, he said, um, Ewan says, is it sad that I want a, re a regular person there, he said. Uh, someone who will be scared and impressed and overwhelmed just like me and not another professional avatar monitor that afterward I want you to tell me I'm as good as Yang Chen or Salai regardless of whether or not that's true. So we basically learn here, I think the only interpretation of this is that another, the, and the name of one of the previous avatars that we didn't know before is Salai. So this has to be an avatar in between Avatar 1 and Avatar Yang Chen. There's a massive gap with every avatar, basically, other than the ones we already know, where we don't know the names of any other avatar. So, Salai is now revealed to be the name of one of them. Now, no, as far as I'm aware, the, the rest of the book does not touch on this again. It is literally just this one time this name is brought up, and that's it. No details given about whether this is a male, female, what... Um, element, you know, what uh, nation avatar this is. Now, my interpretation of this is that I think the name, my interpretation of it would be that it's either fire or earth, just based off the style of name, which is usually a good judge. You can very much get the idea that the names, like water tribe names are very clear, uh, air nomad names are very clear. Now, it's probably earth or fire. I maybe lean more towards it being earth, um, just because like Yang Chen is like the previous avatar, and then the only other avatar it would sort of make sense for him to reference would be like a previous earth avatar. Um, but who knows? This could be us getting the, the official name for Avatar Jafar, the fire avatar before Yang Chen. But um, at least my interpretation right now is that maybe it is the earth avatar before them. But it also could just be a legendary known avatar from somewhere in history that is known for being just as good at the diplomatic side of things as Yang Chen was. But still, nice detail. If you're wondering about like, oh, is there anything we know about like an incident an avatar dealt with in between Wan and Yang Chen, then there's really only one incident that is related to an avatar, like a feat associated to an avatar that is um, an unnamed avatar. And that is the stuff from the Legend of Korra video game and the villain from that, Hundun. In the past, he was uh, defeated, he and his brother were defeated by an unnamed avatar. And, you know, it's one of those things where, like, was Salai that avatar who took uh, Hundun out or not? But, you know, it, it's one thing of, like, we have a named avatar with no feats, and then we have a feat associated with an avatar with no name. Maybe you can link them together, but who really knows? Um, I just think that's a, that's a really, really notable detail, the franchise's avatar, and in the grand scheme of things, we don't actually know the names of that many avatars, so it's always cool when we do get a new one, so that's that. Um, Kyoshi does eventually agree after Yoon convinces her that, you know, yeah, it's probably good that I go, you know, to have that different perspective, and then to tidy up after him as well, because he'll probably make some form of a mess that will uh, need her to be there, so that's interesting. Um, then uh, we find out that, uh, I suppose this is one thing, like just before Rangi arrives in, we sort of learn about sort of Yuan's personality, that he's kind of a little bit kind of touchy and stuff like that. The second she um, agrees to it, uh, it says here, Yuan shuddered with relief. He caught her fingers and brought them gently to his cheek, nuzzling into them as if they were ice for a fever. Thank you, he said. Uh, Kyoshi flushed all the way down to her toes. She reminded herself that his casual tendency to be close to her um, to share touches was just part of his personality. She caught glimpses and heard stories from the staff that confirmed it. One time he'd kissed the hand of a princess of Omashu for a se second longer than normal and scored an entire new trade agreement as a result. It had taken her a very, very long time after starting at the house to convince herself she was not in love with Yoon. Uh, moments like this threatened to undo all of her hard work. She let herself plunge under the surface and enjoy being and enjoy being washed over by the simple contact. So, um, a previous, uh, uh, ch upcoming chapter, I think it's chapter nine, will delve a little bit into the fact that there's a little more going on with Yoon and Kyoshi than maybe this paragraph lets on, but just the simple idea that, you know, Yoon just grabs her hand and puts it next to his face and she sort of goes kind of bright red and kind of freaks out a little bit about it. And It's part of his personality and his charm that he's done it and that he scored a trade agreement with the princess of Omashu at one point. 
uh, just by doing something similar, but it gives you the idea that there is a little bit of an attraction on Kyoshi's part towards Yun, um, which is really, really... Um, it, it's just interesting to see the, the setup of this, the kind of subtle setups of like, they're not in a relationship very clearly, but just little moments like this, we see Kyoshi's interpretation of them and so on. Uh, so Rangi comes in, and we, this is where we get the three-way interaction. And basically what happens is that immediately, Yun's in a good mood, starts kind of teasing Rangi. Okay, we haven't made much pro progress with all these presents and organizing them. Rangi, start burning them, basically, is what he says. And Rangi's kind of like very, very kind of uh, formal about a lot of this stuff, especially with Yun. So she's like, no, 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 we can't possibly do that. And she's trying to keep up that sort of mask of formality with him. But eventually what ends up happening is just he, he keeps going on about it burn it burn it it'll happen we'll achieve this perfect state of mind and um, and then all of a sudden it's just this amazing moment of like a decorative pillow hits him in the face kyoshi you know kyoshi's eyes went wide with disbelief rangi had thrown the pillow and it's this the description of rangi's reaction to her getting frustrated and throwing the pillow at him is, is amazing uh, Rangi looked utterly horrified at what she'd done. She'd attacked the Avatar. She stared at her hands like they were covered in blood. A traitor's eternal punishment awaited her in the afterlife. Yun burst into laughter. So, you know, just she is so respectful towards the Avatar that even just this fun thing of her throwing a pillow at him, she has a temporary like, oh my god, I, I've done something terrible. I can never be forgiven for this. But he just bursts out laughing. They all burst out laughing after this. And it's just this idea that they do get on really really well um that they are all friends so that's pretty interesting and then at the very end we just get a, a little bit of setup for you know kyoshi knows she's going into a little bit of a dangerous situation and the setup is this yun defended the world and rangi defended him but as far as kyoshi was concerned her her own sacred ground was marked by the limits of where her friends stood this is what i need to keep safe above all else um and she says, uh, the sudden clarity of her realization caused her mirth to evaporate. She maintained a, a rick rictus grin so the others wouldn't notice her change in mood. Her fist tightened around and nothing. And the spirits help anyone who would take this from me. So we, we finally have a little bit of kind of, you know, passion in a way from Kiyoshi of like, she actually realizes at this point that going into this mission, what she's focused on above all else is making sure Rangi and Yoon, above everyone, are safe in this mission. That Yoon wants to help everyone be the avatar. Rangi is Yoon's bodyguard, so she's focused on him. Kyoshi's focused on protecting both of them. So that's a nice kind of setup in that she's not a fighter yet, but she still has that kind of desire to protect them. But um, yeah, that is uh, chapter six. Uh, I don't think there's too much more to say about it. It's just a nice chapter showing the dynamic between the three teens. Um, and some interesting details, like the name of a new avatar, uh, some little character traits about Kyoshi and Yoon, and some fun kind of banter, I suppose, right at the end. But uh, yeah, uh, that's going to be the uh, chapter review for today. And then tomorrow, we'll do chapter 7. Chapter 7 is a very long chapter. All the previous chapters have been like 6, 7, 8 pages. Chapter 7, the iceberg, is like 30 pages long. So it's much longer than all the other ones. So tomorrow, you'll probably see... Um, Chapter 7 and Chapter 8 uh, videos come out, and uh, especially in the early part of next week, we'll probably get through a lot of content here um, in the book. So yeah, that's been the video in the comments. Give me your thoughts on Chapter 6, but that's been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.